it seems to go uh, against the most important principle you, you mentioned easier, you know, making it easy. <laughs> Tell me a bit about sludge. Yeah, so sludge is sort of evil nudging or inept nudging. Uh, it, let me give you an innocent example. Uh, you nudged me earlier today by sending me an email that included the link to this event tonight, which was just as well because searching for it, I would have had to remember to look for an email from no reply hyphen Zoom. Now, you know how many of those are in my email box? Quite a, a few, I suspect. Yeah. So who thought of that, that you would send that important email from that anonymous account? That's sludge. It's not evil. Not, Zoom is in the business of making this sort of event bearable. And we've all, we've all grown to hate it, but thankfully it existed in 2020 because I don't know what we would have done without it. So, but there's lots of intentional sludge. The thing that got me started on sludge was when my previous book, Misbehaving, came out in 2015, there was a very nice review published in the Times of London, but they have one of the strictest paywalls in the business. None of this 10 free articles. You can't look at the first word of an article, but they have a trial subscription for one pound, a mere pound. And uh, 30 days, um, one month, trial subscription. So I'm thinking, hmm, I'm, I'm curious about what they think of the book, but the trial subscription, I better check how you get out of this. So I look at the fine print and I see, in order to unsubscribe, which you better do because they will automatically resubscribe you, you have to give a credit card for that one pound. There's no way to put the bill in, right? So you, uh, what do you have to do? You have to call London during London business hours, not on a toll-free line. Now imagine doing this from Sydney. There's probably, there's about, we found there were about two hours when we're both awake to do this event. And uh, there was about two hours. I would have had two hours while I was awake and they were awake to cancel this. Now, amusingly, the Times just published a very nice review of the final edition. Congratulations. And I um, pointed out to the author the origin that the Times deserves credit for the term sludge. And I dared him to put that into his article, which he did. <laughs> now, go read it, but... Uh, it helps if you have one of those burner credit cards that are one use only, because otherwise you better remember to unsubscribe. I don't think the university provides, but <laughs> <laughs> um, let me let me follow that up with the question that's been asked a couple of times um, a couple of times in in the audience, because there have been many. Um, nudges um, implemented by governments and, and by many employers that have a very sludgy flavor. How, how do we reduce sludge in organization, especially when it comes to, to really important things? Well, you know, I think um, in the private sector, one of the biggest sludge emitters is the Department of Human Resources. And I, it's not completely their fault. I mean, they, they sort of are the part of the organization that makes sure that all the rules are being followed. But, you know, even... So here's an amusing and fairly harmless bit of sludge. I have a university credit card um, and I bought something on Amazon. Uh, and then 
for my something for my office, didn't like it and sent it back. And by the time the report came in, the charge had already been refunded. But I still had to provide a receipt for the zero balance so that they could scratch it off. Why they needed to know what it was that I didn't spend any of the university's money on is a mystery to me. So there, there's no organization that couldn't save lots of money and make their employees all a lot happier by just going through and getting rid of sludge. And uh, I must say, I haven't been successful at eliminating it at my university, although they're, they're pretty good about these things.